Thomas, from a European process perspective, how are you seeing things now? Yeah, what we saw was in uh, in March, uh, we saw quite a surge in demand for our products. Uh, you know, we're mostly in the retail sector, so we have not been hit by a, a loss of the of the food service. So March, we saw you know a very good increase in the sales. Uh, however, uh, April turned out to be to be normal, and that's what we're seeing now also into the beginning of of May. So to some extent, you could say that Easter came, you know, two weeks earlier than we expected uh, when it comes when it came to the came to the safes. Uh, for the pandemic, uh, more in particular, uh, we identified, you know, that our key risk would be to, to end up in a situation where we had to shut down our plant. You know, there's close to 2000 people in the same place. So we initiated a number of actions uh, from early on March. And uh, so far, we've been able to to keep operating at a normal level, despite having a few workers also being testing positive for the virus. Thanks, thanks Thomas. Actually, I'm, I'm interested in exploring a little bit more what was mentioned by Arild and in particular about the larger fish being now cheaper than the, the smaller fish. From a processing point of view, have you been able to take advantage of that and, and, and purchase the larger fish and find ways to, to process it? Or have you not done that? We have actually bought, you know, a uh, larger fish uh, uh, for processing, and uh, and when uh, the um, the price of that came down, you know, it became interesting. Uh, and there are some benefits. Uh, there are some issues when it comes to the yield, but you know, when the price is right, this is also working fine in uh, in our products. The retail side in Europe, in particular, I would say in the Western side of Europe, mm. you know, it's quite structured and organized and um, prices are agreed for quite some period and, and promotions are uh, agreed, you know, ahead of time. So it's it's not like, you know, they they read the um, the uh, the prices of the Nasdaq and decide to run promotions to help the fish farmers. Um, so, you know, pretty much most of 2020 is already agreed and settled when it comes mm -hmm. to the, the retail side. So you won't, you won't see a lot of new offerings or, or, or uh, lower prices. A little bit more flexible on the, say, Central and Eastern European side, but they tend to be, be, um, be more flexible on, uh, on promos and, and, uh, and pricing. So there could be more opportunities on the eastern side to uh, to provide a compelling offer to the uh, to the customer. Uh, overall, what we see in, in the European landscape, um, it's fairly stable, I would say. Uh, and um, if you also look uh, a little bit historical over the last three years, the retail prices have come down. You know, in in uh, they reached a peak, I think, in 17, they came down in 18, came down in 19, and again in the beginning of 2020. And we haven't seen an increase in, in the volumes of any significance, I would say, in the, uh, in the um, uh, retail market in, uh, in Europe. So, so uh, I'm a little bit skeptical to the, um, to the hypothesis by, by, uh, by Sparbank One that, you know, this will, you know, create a huge demand for uh, for salmon through the retail space uh, at least when it comes to european market